a new National Democratic Congress government, God willing, and with the votes of the sovereign people of Ghana in 2025. Well, repeal the E Levy Act. Oh, there he is. That, that, that a beautiful suit on, isn't it? Oh, he usually does. Okay. So he talked about um, the E Levy. Yeah, he didn't. He did. He said he's going to repeal the E Levy. I've already showed the video. The issue I have with the repeal the E Levy is not whether he will do it or he won't do it. That, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not so concerned about that. You can start timing now. Yeah? I'm not so concerned about that. Yeah, people think that he can say he will do it, he won't do it. That's okay. Okay. But the problem is, going into the election, we're going to have a situation. And it is a big situation for President Muhammad's PR team. President Muhammad cannot speak about anything in Ghana relating to his electability without stoutly defending his record. That's the danger. President Mahama cannot promise much. He would have to defend his record. He would have to come and say that this is my record. And that is his record. Because you have a record. When people come into government and they don't have a record, that's okay. They can promise anything. So people trust people who say that deal with my record. Don't forget about me. I'm going to play you Joe Biden. you hear what he said. Because Biden came in 2020. He was running in the election, having been vice president for two terms. He stood on the platform and said, American people forget, this is my record. I have a record. He has a record. So if you are running for president, you have to talk about your record. President Mahama said something about re his record, only to say that he apologized or he, he admitted his mistake, something like that. I'll show you the video as well. So that's my two persuasive take on President Mahama. You, I mean, he can say that I'll repeal E. Levy. How will you challenge it? The guy is going to be in office for one term. He's not coming for a second term. When presidents promise, when President Akufuado promised free SHS, there was pressure on him when he became president. But he told his people that this is a promise that we have made. We can't go back on it. Because the promises of our fourth republic and even our first and second earlier republics have just been laughable. We have been a people, those of us who have covered politics, we've been laughing at politicians promising. The only reason why in 2020 promises became useful again was because Akufuado was able to deliver his promise. Since 1960, politicians promised. They don't deliver. We laugh at it. They can't. They say they'll take the seat to Kumasi. And they promise all sorts of things. So we had forgotten about promises. So if you look at 2000's election, President Kufuor didn't promise because he said that I'm not going to promise anything because nobody believed politicians who were promising. Now that has changed. It's changed because Akufuor said I will deliver free SHS and he delivered it. So immediately people know that, oh, so they can say something and they will do it. So John Mahama came in 2020 and said, Okada this, Okada that. And people were listening because Akufuado has changed the dynamics of the Ghanaian politics for 30 years. This is the first time. How old are you? Tell me your age. Remember one politician who promised something and did it? Buzia, Liman, Rawlings, everybody. They didn't do it. Akufuado was the only one in that long period who promised a major social intervention and he achieved it. And people said he was not going to be able to do it, but he did it. So because he was able to do that, promises now come back on the table. And in 2020, President Mahama is promising. But here, President Mahama cannot promise anymore. He has to tell us the, 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 the record. But look at my record. And if you look at my record and look at their record, and that's what's going to happen in 2024. It's going to be a competition of records. I do not understand why President Mahama is not beginning on that tangent that is my record, and he's saying that I will repeal E. Levy. If he comes and he doesn't, he should say that when I come in January 2025, by February 2nd or, Fe or June, whenever, August, I will repeal E. Levy. If I don't repeal E. Levy by August, ask me to resign, and I will resign. When you say that, we can take it more seriously. But you're a president who is coming to do one term. We, you don't owe us, once we vote you into office, you don't owe us anything anymore. How do we know whether you do it or you won't do it? When a tax is bringing money into the kitty and you need the money for a development and, and you're a developing country, you want us to believe that you come and see four billion coming in every year and say, I don't want it. Nobody's going to do that. If, and, and President Mahama can promise because he wins the power. He walks away. Two years down the line, he's gone. 
He's never coming back on the ballot again. You can eat your promise. You can eat your anger. You can eat whatever. President Mahama, you will not get him again because he's not coming for you to vote for him again. He's doing one term, finished. So he comes and says, I'll take you to the moon. I'll do every Okay, he doesn't do it. What would you do? You have nothing to do. So if I were President Mahama, which I'm not, I would have said, if you want us to take the promise serious, this is the promise. This is the consequence. I will do it on this date. God willing. I don't do with this the consequence. He puts himself like the Jesus Christ on the crucifixion. Then you can take him serious because when Akufado promised free SHS, when he became president, the people said, Mr. President, it's going to be complicated. He said, but you can't say that. You won't do it. Because we have promised and we have to redeem the Ghanaian politician. I think that effort was to redeem the Ghanaian politician. Akufuado truly redeemed the Ghanaian politician from the laughing stock that they became with promises. Nobody crowd was expecting the fears. You didn't know, oh, this is campaign giving. But when it happened, so in 2020, when Akufuado was contesting for the land, I believe that his winning the 2020 elections was based on this video that was released, where he said that, forget, I don't have anything to say. I have been president for four years. John Mahama has been president for four years. Look at my record. Look at his record. End of story. See the video. Akufuado speaking. No, but really, I think that... Um for me, the two main issues are the ones that you have accurately captured. For the first time in our history, we're going to go into an election where the two major parties are being led by a president and his predecessor. It's not happened before. Usually it is an incumbent against somebody who's coming for the first time. This is the first time where the immediate past president and the current president. So the issue of their record is absolutely critical. I think it's, we have to be very, very insistent on looking at the records of the two leaders in the period of, uh, of, their, of, their, of their governorship, as it were. Uh, and um, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's inescapable as far as this election is concerned. And then secondly, deriving from it is... He used, it's inescapable for John Mahama, President Mahama, to run a campaign for 2024 without saying, put my record on the line, without establishing and endorsing his own record, that this is my record, and this is what I did as Vice President, President, Minister, Deputy Minister, DC, this is my record. But you cannot leave your record and come and say, I will repeal the E-Levy. Yeah, okay, good news, but how would you do What? what how are we going to hold you to that? If you make a promise, you have to tell us how to hold you to it because we don't have that single way to hold every president to when he's coming for his second term. That's when we hold them to account. You promise something, you don't do it, you come for your second term, you're in trouble. He's not coming for a second term, he's gone. So when he makes a promise, he must say that this. And as I told you, it will be complicated for a leader to rise up in 2025, sees that, $5 billion uh, CDs is going to come in. It is nearly a billion dollar. I don't want it. Well, 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 well. Joe Biden and Donald Trump found themselves in this situation. This is what Biden said. Have a look. Because they have a drug problem. They should be going to rehabilitation, not to jail. We should fundamentally change the system, and that's what I'm going to do. But why didn't he do it four years ago? Why didn't you do that four years ago, even less than that? Why didn't you I do am it? You were vice president. You keep talking about all these things you're going to do and you're going to do this. But you were there just a short time ago and you guys did nothing. We did. You know, Joe, I, I ran because of you. I ran because of Barack Obama, because you did a poor job. If I thought you did a good job, I would have never run. Uh, I would have never run. <laughs> I ran because of you. I'm looking at you now. You're a politician. I ran because of you. All right, Vice President Biden, your response to that, and then I do have some yeah. questions for both of you. Well, I tell you what, I, uh, I hope he does look at me because what's happening here is you know who I am. You know who he is. You know his character. You know my character. You know our reputations for honor and telling the truth. I am anxious to have this race. I am anxious to see this take place. I am... The character of the country is on the ballot. Our character is on the ballot. Look at us closely. We have to make a... So you hear that? First start with Trump. He said, what are you talking about? You have been there. You've been there. You've been there. Uh, what are you talking about? You've been there. I know you. You've been there. Then Biden says, yeah, it's true. I've been there. 
So American people, look at me. You know my character. And look at him. And he made, he, said, he made one line we couldn't find. He said that it's not because of me. Biden said that all the time. Those of you who watch will remember. He said it's not because of me, but it's because of who I'm running against. Biden said that so many times. He said it's not me, it's who I'm running against. So, and, and uh, Trump started on the show note. What are you talking about? You've been there. You've been there for eight years. What are, you, what are you talking about? And then the guy says, well, I've been there. And that is me. And you see him and you see me. So it's a record. So President Mahama, the only way he can campaign with conviction is to defend his record. His record is significant. Four years vice president, four years president, minister, etc., etc. But the record... Because you are coming in for another four years and you have done four years before. So he should be saying, look at my four years and you want another four years of that, you elect me. Straightforward. But he has something to say. President Mahama has something to say. A little bit about the record. A little bit about his attitude in appreciating his own mistakes and how these people are doing. Let's have a look at that and then we close. How about, let's show that one. We're well and truly at a crossroads. A crossroad that is acutely complicated by the doubt and fear experienced by our next generations that they face a future that carries no expectation of success in their lives. For most Ghanaians, the feeling of despondency and hopelessness is real and personal. It is exacerbated by a dangerous trend of growing inequality and lack of upward social and economic mobility, in addition to a calculated effort at constraining social justice. Interestingly, the condescending responses from government officials to public complaints have often accentuated the frustration and anger of the people. A government bereft of ideas has resorted to incarceration of critical voices, name-calling of citizens, and unfair categorization of the labor force and huge numbers of unemployed youth as lazy and undeserving. Worst of all, government has been using chaotic shouts and insincere technical analysis laden with dubious comparisons and outward, outright untruths to manage the narrative. Another worrying trend is the bastardization of independent constitutional bodies. Okay, so that's our, that's our story, that's our song about uh, President Mohammed's work, but we still do congratulate him for putting pen to paper, standing before an audience and delivering it so that we have some text that we can look at. We have some guidelines, we have some bases. Before the Dr. Baumia started doing these things, politicians were not doing that. Thank you to Dr. Baumia for starting this. It's now become part of our culture. Congratulations, Ghanaians are moving forward. Congratulations, President Mahama. But the conviction is missing. This is our story, this is our song.